day folks, Sean here from Air Photography. So today we're going to be doing a signal strength and range test of the new Sky Rover X1. This is something that uh, many people have asked for. Now we're going to primarily focus on the Sky Rover in this video, uh, but once we're done the flight, we're going to do a flight, the exact same flight with the Mini 4 Pro. And that way we can kind of do a comparison on what the signal strength is on each one. Now I do suspect that the Mini 4 Pro will perform a little bit better. The Sky Rover has a transmission system called Skybridge and it's rated for 15 kilometers, whereas the Mini 4 Pro uses the 04 transmission system and it's rated for 20 kilometers. So we might get a little more performance out of it. Now in all reality, you're never gonna fly out that far with a drone like this, uh, but you know, that signal strength can be really important, especially when you're flying around obstacles, uh, lots of interference, you know, good solid connection is extremely important. Now, before we put the drone up in the air, I just have to point out, I live in Canada, so I follow Transport Canada drone regulations, not the FAA drone regulations. So I know in the US, you cannot fly your sub 250 gram drones beyond visual line of sight. Uh, but here in Canada, we can, as long as we do it in a safe manner. So I just wanted to make that clear, just otherwise I know there'll be a lot of comments about breaking rules. Uh, but here in Canada, we can fly our sub 250 gram drones beyond visual line of sight. So with all that said, let's just get it up and uh, we'll go for a flight. All right, so let's get the drone up here. Now what I'm gonna do here is put the drone right up to 120 meters. And uh, that way when we put the Mini 4 Pro up, uh, we'll keep things the same. Quite often I would just fly out and then raise it as needed. So we're gonna be in sport mode and uh, off we go. Now I've put the drone right up to 120 meters and uh, doing that for a few different reasons. Uh, that way we have good signal strength and that way when we put the Mini 4 Pro up, uh, we can keep things the same and uh, see if there's any differences. And right now we're flying at 16 meters per second in sport mode. Our battery's at 93%. And uh, this range test isn't about pushing it to the absolute max to see how far we can get. Uh, it's just to see what the signal strength is gonna be at a distance and uh, you know what the FPV feed is like once we get out there. And uh, so far everything looks good, nice and smooth. And I'll probably cut some of this out just so it's uh, not too boring. We'll just... Uh, Anything interesting happens, that's what we'll uh, include in the video. But uh, so far, so good. You can see the FPV screen has a twitch in there a little bit, uh, but still smooth so far. We uh, dropped RC bars there just for a split second. So we're now a kilometer and a half out, and uh, so far, so good. We're getting a little bit of glitching there in the FPV feed. Um, it's still fairly smooth, but you can see there's a little bit of glitching there. And uh, not sure what that's about. It can be a lot of different reasons. It's not overly hot today. I think it's about 28 degrees Celsius. Uh, I can see my phone not too bad, but uh, that can be a problem with these. That's kind of been a common thing that people have been talking about is that they wish it had an option for a built-in screen, a controller with a built-in screen. Uh, so hopefully that's something that maybe perhaps they'll offer in the future because it's really hard to go back to this type of device. Just coming up on two and a half kilometers, we're 2,400 meters out. And uh, the feed looks pretty good still, but uh, you can see that there's some glitching there a little bit. And our strength is kind of dropping down there. We went into the yellow, but then it went back up. We've got uh, four bars. We're going to be coming up to three kilometers here in a minute. So it will be really interesting to see how this compares to the Mini 4 Pro. And when I put the Mini 4 Pro out, we're going to be using the RCN2. Um, that way it's going to be kind of a fair comparison on the style of controller. So we're just hit the three kilometer mark and uh, so far so good. Our signal strength is kind of bouncing around there. You can see now it's down in the yellow, then it goes back up to white. Uh, but we still have four bars. Battery's at 74%. So what I'm going to do is when 
it triggers me to come home because the battery's too low, that's when I'll just come home. And uh, we'll just let it do a return to home. And it'll be interesting to see the battery performance difference between the two drones as well. You know, we're going to be doing the exact same flight. We just hit four kilometers. You can see the feed, it's getting a little bit uh, broken up there. Uh, but I still have full control. So I think what we're going to do here is once we hit five kilometers, we're going to initiate a return to home. So there we go there, we're at five kilometers. You can see the feed was breaking up a little bit near the end there, but uh, we could probably push it out to six kilometers, but I'm actually really happy with that. So let's uh, go ahead and we're gonna initiate a return to home here. And uh, we'll just let the drone come back. All right, the drone is on the home stretch here. Uh, we're about 200 meters away. You can see there that it's traveling at 10 meters per second in the automatic return to home. And uh, we'll just let it come in and do a landing. There's a landing pad out in front of me. That's where we took off from. So we'll see how close it is when it comes down for an automatic landing. And you can see there, it automatically lowered its altitude as it was uh, coming in, similar to how other DJI drones perform. It's up there. And that uh, looks pretty close. Might be off by a little bit, but actually it looks like it's almost dead on. So yeah, as you can see, it landed pretty well exactly where it took off from, off by maybe two or three inches. So that's pretty impressive. So now we're gonna put the Mini 4 Pro up and we'll do the exact same test. All right, so now we have the Mini 4 Pro out there in front of me. So let's do the exact same test and we'll see if there's any differences. And again, I'm gonna put the Mini 4 Pro up to 120 meters. And that way it's a, a somewhat fair comparison. All right, so let's go for a flight. Now I have this one in kilometers per hour. Uh, the other one was in meters per second, uh, but they should be flying about the same speed. I think top speed of the Mini 4 Pro is 16 meters per second. So it should be doing approximately the same. And uh, again, we'll just try and get out to about five kilometers and uh, we'll see if there's any differences there in the feed and uh, battery usage as well. Uh, when the Sky Rover landed, I think it was at 27%. Uh, when we did a return to home, I think it was around 62%, somewhere in there. So we'll see if there's any differences in battery usage as well. It's definitely hard to see the screen. Uh, if you've been flying any drone with a built-in screen, like the RC2 or the new RC Pro 2, uh, those have really bright screens that stay consistently bright. That does make it a little bit easier to see on bright days. But uh, yeah, hopefully they do come out with something similar. And uh, feed. It's hard to say we're not that far out yet. We just hit a kilometer and a half, uh, but the feed on the Mini 4 Pro is of course nice and smooth. I'll look at the uh, screen recording more closely when I get home to see if there's any differences there. It's kind of hard to tell when it's really dim. I suspect the Mini 4 Pro will have a little bit better transmission distance and strength just due to it being the 04 transmission system that has a rating of 20 kilometers. Uh, so that should make a little bit of a difference actually. We're just coming up here shortly on two and a half kilometers. And uh, so far so good. We've lost a bar of signal strength. And I should mention that I am using the smaller battery for the DJI Mini 4 Pro, uh, just to keep it under 250 grams. So this is a legal flight. And that way the battery performance should be very similar between the two drones. See, we're starting to get a little bit of signal loss there. It's bouncing around between white and orange. I think the uh, Sky Rover did about the same thing at this distance. But I would have to say the FPV feed is a little bit smoother at this distance. Uh, the Sky Rover was glitching a little bit. It was still definitely usable. It wasn't anything I'm too worried about, but uh, just something to make note of. coming up to three and a half kilometers. 
so far so good. Just looking at this, the Mini 4 Pro is actually using more battery power because we're already down to 65% and uh, we're not even four kilometers out yet. So the uh, Sky Rover might be a little more efficient when it comes to batteries. Now with that said, the batteries on the Sky Rover haven't had as many charge cycles. I'm not sure exactly how many charge cycles this battery has had, so that can sometimes be a factor as well. Because yeah, now we're down to 61%. This is, uh, we'd already been out to five kilometers with the Sky Rover at this point. So we may not even make it out to five kilometers before. And that's actually interesting. You can see I've gone to red. I'm standing in the exact same position. We might actually get disconnected here. And yeah, it's telling us to come home. So let's just do a return to home. So that was actually interesting there. We only got out to 4.3 kilometers and uh, it was almost on the verge of being disconnected there. And you can see it also used more battery power. So that is kind of interesting. So we'll just let this come home and uh, we'll see how accurate it is when it lands. All right, so the Mini 4 Pro is almost back home. We're 150 meters out and it should uh, start making its descent soon. And uh, we'll do a comparison to see how well it lands on the landing pad out in front of me. And you can see just like the Sky Rover, it's lowering its altitude as it's coming in as needed. Stand back and get out of the way a little bit. Looks pretty accurate, just like the Sky Rover. It's right up there. And it looks like it's going to land right on the pad as well. And there we go, almost identically to where it took off from. So they both do a good job at return to home and landing pretty close to where they took off from. So yeah, folks, that was my range test and comparison of the Sky Rover X1 and the DJI Mini 4 Pro. And the results were actually quite interesting. I wasn't really expecting that. The Mini 4 Pro, I think, had a smoother transmission system all the way out consecutively, or consistently, I should say. Uh, but we could only get out to about 4.3 kilometers before we were on the verge of being disconnected and it triggered a low battery return to home. Whereas with the Sky Rover, we were out to five kilometers. Now the FPV feed was getting a little, uh, little shaky there, uh, but I felt comfortable still. And we probably could have pushed it out, I would say even perhaps to six kilometers. And we had more battery power when we uh, sent it back home. So again, some interesting results. At the end of the day, they're both great drones and uh, Sky Rover might be a great choice for those who want a high performance mini drone, but are unable to get something like the Mini 4 Pro just due to some of the regulations and uh, you know availability. Uh, something like this might be a good option. Unfortunately, you cannot buy it with a controller that has a built-in screen and they're not compatible with the DJI controllers. Uh, so hopefully that is something maybe perhaps they address in the future with some new hardware. Well, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this video and found it had value. Thanks a lot for watching and we'll see you in the next one.